If you've been around the blockchain space at all, maybe you've researched the technology or even got your hands dirty with it, you've heard all kinds of narratives about how, you know, it's the future of finance. It's the future of digital art with NFTs. And you've probably also heard about its tremendous potential to change the internet as we know it today. You know, lots of people talk about how the blockchain ecosystem right now resembles a lot of the early days of the internet and how it's a, you know, brand new technology that's still kind of slow and expensive to use, but it has a ton of upside potential to be an absolute game changer for the long term. And so this video, I'm going to talk about that last part, how blockchain technology, specifically Ethereum, has such a tremendous potential to change the internet as we know it. And now this presents such a massive opportunity for everybody who's watching this YouTube video, who's interested in this technology, and how you can take advantage of this trend right now while it's still early. I'm going to talk about that as a blockchain developer who works the Ethereum protocol on a daily basis, how I've done this and how you can do it too. So before we get into that, you know, if you're around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master step by step from start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. So if you're subscribed to this YouTube channel, then you might have seen my video come out last week how I talked about, you know, web 3.0 being one of the next hot trends in blockchain. If you didn't watch that video, do a quick recap, which is basically, you know, blockchain technology is a huge, massive trend, but it has these smaller trends underneath it, like DeFi, like NFTs that gain a ton of popularity really fast, and how web 3.0 can be another trend that could do something very similar. And so web 3.0 is basically basically a new internet built by blockchain and other decentralized technology, which I'll talk about in this video. But one of the reasons I'm bringing up the video from last week, and I'm also making this video, is because we could be at the beginning of this trend really starting to gain popularity. So one reason I think that is we're starting to see the price of Filecoin take off quite a bit. Typically, cryptocurrency prices follow people's sentiment on particular technologies. And the fact that Filecoin is going up like this could be an indication that people are ready for that next trend. Now, this is, of course, not financial advice. That's not necessarily an indicator. But I want to make this video to prepare you for this and tell you how to take advantage of it because I do still think that Web 3.0 is going to get a lot more attention in the future and probably really soon. And so a quick recap on what Web 3.0 is, you know, in case you're not familiar. So essentially, think about the internet happening in multiple phases. Web 1.0, Web 2.0, and then, you know, Web 3.0 is which we're building right now. So Web 2.0 is basically an internet where we just had static web pages where you could just go to a website that essentially just had information on it, okay? You couldn't really do much with it. Uh, you could just think about it almost like having a digital you know, newspaper or message board or something like that. Then you have Web 2.0, which is way more interactive. You could actually have you know websites that let you sign up, have an account, post things on a social network. This enabled new applications like social networks, eBay, any of the popular modern web services you use now, like Dropbox, for example, and also the mobile web. So now we're looking at a new version of Internet Web 3.0 that takes this to the next level, which actually creates the Internet of Value, a trustless, censorship-resistant Internet that's powerful powered by blockchains and other decentralized technologies. And so if you think about decentralized finance or DeFi, which I talk a lot about on this channel, which is basically taking everything we have in finance right now and moving it over to the blockchain, things like savings, loans, trading, et cetera, et cetera, and also adding more new use cases that aren't really possible in the old system. You can think about Web 3.0 like the exact same way. So anything you can think of that powers the internet today, we can essentially move that over to blockchain and then also add new things that aren't possible in Web 2.0 world. So if you're a developer and you understand like Amazon Web Services or AWS, AWS or Google Platform or any of these big essentially just web hosting companies that offer multiple services like abilities to create front ends for your website, back ends, databases, file storage. You can also do stuff like DNS with blockchain and other decentralized technologies as well. And so that's essentially what Web 3.0 starts to do. And it also creates new things beyond that. So one of the core technologies in this entire stack is Ethereum because it's a public blockchain that's been active for a long time. It supports smart contracts. It's the leader in this technology with the most market share. It's the number two market cap cryptocurrency that I'm recording this video. And so it's a really important technology at changing how the internet works and how lots of different applications can be built on top of it to create this censorship resistant, trustless, internet of value. And I do think this is one of the big shifts that's coming down the pike where blockchain can disrupt what we have today and also let what we have today bridge over to build blockchain solutions on top of this. I think it's one of the biggest, most profitable trends that hasn't really gotten saturated yet. And so how can you take advantage of it if you're watching this channel? Now, of course, you could go out and try to buy cryptocurrencies that are associated with these projects. I'm not telling you to do that. That's not financial advice. And that's not really the point of this channel. I do talk about cryptocurrencies. It's not about giving you financial advice. But what I think is honestly better for a lot of people who are interested in technology, who are technically savvy, who might already be programmers or just want to learn programming, is to actually learn the skills required to build Web 3.0. And these skills can be transferred over into other areas of interest in blockchain like DeFi, NFTs, et cetera, et cetera, that are super hot right now. And that's also going to enable you to get ahead of this Web 
Web 3.0 trend that's coming really quickly down the pike. And that's one of the reasons I want to make this video is to show you what you need to know in order to do that and how you can actually learn it so that you can jump on this trend. Because again, blockchain is one of the highest paying fields in tech right now. It's got one of the highest average salaries out of anything you could basically learn as a programmer. The demand has surged in the last year because there's a huge gold rush of people trying to build new applications in this space. And they all need to hire developers to realize that vision. All right, so let me tell you how to jump on this Web 3.0 trend. So first, I want to clear up two common objections or questions that I have. Number one is, do I have to be a programmer already to do this? My answer is no. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. Just go to my YouTube homepage. You can see the student testimonials down below, people who changed their careers, learned blockchain, who didn't have programming backgrounds, okay? Number two is if you're trying to learn programming, like, do you have to go learn a bunch of other programming languages before you start blockchain? My answer is no. Start with exactly what you want to learn, learn those skills, and learn everything else as you go. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So if you want to learn how to build a Web 3.0 application, like find a Web 3.0 application tutorial and just do that. Jump in with both feet first and learn those programming languages as you build the project. So that's exactly what I teach you how to do in this channel. And if you go to my YouTube homepage, you can scroll down here. Uh, well, actually, just go look at the look at the playlists here, okay? I just created a Web 3.0 playlist where I've added multiple tutorial videos that show you how to build Web 3.0 projects. If you go here, you can see there's an Instagram clone on blockchain. There's a, a game built on blockchain, a YouTube clone, and also a Dropbox clone. So that'll give you an idea of how some of these applications that we have today can be built with blockchain technology. So Instagram, for example, you need a way to upload images and share them on a social network. It actually integrates blockchain-based incentives like tipping posts and, you know, the highest tip posts pull up to the top of the feed. You can sort posts that way. So there's you know, new economic incentives that change how the social network works rather than just, you know, putting stuff on blockchain for the sake of doing it that way. So that's step one is find something that you want to build with blockchain technology, find a tutorial that can do it, and then learn those programming languages as you go. So what are the, what's the technologies that make this possible? So first, of course, we have Ethereum, which is the blockchain where the smart contracts go. Okay. And the smart contracts are basically the backend portion of the web application. So if you think about, you know, any application that you use right now, let's say you're watching this on youtube.com, there's a bunch of data that lives inside of a database and there's a backend web server that runs it. That's a simplified explanation, but that's the gist. The analogy here is that we use smart contracts as the application layer for the backend part of the application that runs Instagram. Okay. And those smart contracts get put on top of Ethereum. And this basically is our network that we connect to and also acts as a database for how we store all the posts with that smart contract. And then next, we can actually create a client side application that lets us, you know, upload images, but those images have to have a place to go. And so you don't want to put images on a blockchain itself. So that's why you use a third party and you don't want to put images on a blockchain itself. So that's why you use another peer to peer file storage system like IPFS, for example. So IPFS is a decentralized file storage network. It's not a blockchain, but it works somewhat like a blockchain in the sense that there's redundancy. All right. Whenever you put a file on IPFS, uh, that file is distributed across multiple nodes, or at least the hash of that file is. And it's secured by, uh, you know, multiple participants in the network, a lot like a blockchain. And so what you can do is basically put the files on something like IPFS, and then store a reference to those files in your smart contracts on the top of the blockchain. That's how you build these decentralized Instagram. You put the pictures and videos in IPFS, and then you store the location of those pictures and images inside the smart contracts that live on top of the blockchain. You can also do this with your website that talks to the smart contracts on the blockchain. You could store this on IPFS as well, instead of putting on a centralized web server. And this is basically how you would pull, build a fully decentralized web 3.0 application that would decentralize every part of the app. And it would also use cryptocurrency on the top of the Ethereum network to introduce economic incentives in order for people to tip for the social network as well. So essentially it takes every part of the web 2.0 app makes it a web 3.0 app and then adds an extra reason for people to use it by introducing cryptocurrency in the equation, something that's very native to web 3.0 that's not really native to web 2.0. And so inside that tutorial, I'll teach you everything you need to know. I teach you Solidity, which is the programming language for writing Ethereum smart contracts. I teach you how Ethereum works. I show you how IPFS works so you can store files in a decentralized way like your images and videos and also put your website on IPFS so that it can become fully decentralized for web 3.0. And so that's an overview of how you can actually learn the skills for web 3.0 to get ahead of this trend before it really comes in full force. Now, that being said, there are problems that still have to be solved before, you know, Web 3.0 can arrive in its full glory. I'd be fully realistic about that. You know, while this is a tutorial that shows you how to build an Instagram clone on the blockchain, you're probably not just going to be able to launch this and have people just flock to it and now use this instead of Instagram. So what are the blockers that would, you know, prevent this from happening? 
Well, a lot of people are happy with you know what they have in Web 2.0 right now. So Instagram works pretty well. So a lot of what I'm teaching you here is to get you get your you know gears turning in your head so you can see how do you code something for real on blockchain and, and connect it with something you already know and moving that over to the blockchain so that you can you know connect the dots and learn a lot faster. But I think there's a big opportunity to find you know Web 3.0 incentives that will actually cause people to move from Web 2.0 that they have right now to Web 3.0 applications. And part of the real hard problem to solve is actually identifying those incentives and clearly communicating them to the end user so that they'll jump through all the hoops in order to actually make that transition. So we've seen this with cryptocurrency and DeFi, right? So think about the user experience with DeFi right now. It's kind of bad to tell you the truth. You know, it's really slow, it's expensive to use. But there are lots of people who will go and use DeFi right now, even with the bad user experience with the high fees, because they can still make money with it. And a lot of times they can make a lot more money than they can in the traditional financial system right now. So if we're going to attract a lot of people over to Web 3.0 with a suboptimal user experience that it has right now, we have to give them real reasons to do it. But there are some reasons that I think are already coming up people's mind, which is like censorship resistance. You know, we've seen deplatforming happen over the past year. People are starting to be concerned about that. But I do think we could probably also find some ways to add economic incentives into Web 3.0 that don't really exist very well in Web 2.0 today. And so therein lies the exciting challenge. I do think we'll see these use cases come up. And I do think that we'll see this technology advance far beyond what it is today and to be in way more demand than it is today as we figure these things out. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. What can you build on Web 3.0 that doesn't exist today that you're personally excited about? All right. So that's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so more people can learn about blockchain. If you like these videos and you want to do exactly what I'm talking about, like I said, just go to my YouTube homepage, go to the playlist, find the Web 3.0 playlist, follow any of those tutorials. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. Again, I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. And if you like those tutorials and you want to take the next step or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I should become a blockchain master step by step from start to finish over at dappydiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dappy Diversity.